Hello, hello. Thank you for coming tonight. I really appreciate that. Okay. So now, the theme for tonight is Dare, uh, dare to Build. Hello. My name is Joanna Wachowski, and I am Deb. So I, I'm a woman, I'm not only just dad, but I'm a sister and I'm a teacher. All of that makes me Joanna. So often when, you, when people hear that word deaf, they look at me like, what am I gonna do? It's okay, I'm deaf, it's okay. We can work together, okay? give a little bit of an explanation about the ASL language. Right now, our theme for tonight is Dare to Build. Falpo University's theme is Dare to Build. So a lot of times people think ASL and English are equivalent. So those words, Dare to Build, have a meaning. And you guys know that meaning for the word dare. There is, there is not just one sign for that word dare. Let me give you an example. I'm going to give you an example in ASL. That word dare can look like this. All of these different signs give you the same meaning. Dare. Now the word build. That's build. This can be build or that. All of those can be build. So the theme, Dare to Build, can look like this in American Sign Language. That's not just one word to one word, ASL in English. It's not the same. No, absolutely not the same. So that's what ASL and English look like. Now, I am deaf, and I am involved in the community but how did I get involved into the deaf community? And what does that mean? What activities are part of the deaf community? We have pictures of the ASL preschool. These, all of these pictures represent programs that we have established. So for the preschool, my two children are hearing, but deaf people can go and go to the preschool too. So the two children right here on this bottom picture are my, my hearing children. They're a little grown now, but they're not adults. So in this preschool, we use ASL sign to teach. And then we add English. It's very important to add that English component too, but we teach using sign language. Hearing children can learn too, and this language can develop. So up until now, that program's been going, and then it, it's, kind of fizzled out a little bit, but we will get back to it. So this picture over here, where the children are sitting, it's story time. So oftentimes we'll go to the library or a, a bookstore and everybody will sit and can watch, be a part of this story time. It's not only for deaf, but it could be for an ASL student or anybody hearing that wants to sign. They can go to that ASL story time. It's really a good experience for the deaf to communicate with different communities. Now this other picture right here is our deaf, oh, is the Valparaiso's Popcorn Festival that happens every year. So a couple years ago, our organization wanted to be a part of the Popcorn Festival. We're not an isolated community, but we do like to get together. We have the same culture and the same language and we, we like to um, hang out together and we wanted to get a new experience in this popcorn parade. We would see people, that sign right there is a plot, that, that's sign language and we noticed that people were learning or knew how to sign that and they would say, I know sign and then we would be like, who's that? So I'm deaf like you. We would see people saying that and where have you been? Come join us. We always think that uh, or the deaf community is isolated, so we're trying to include different communities 
and have different experiences as deaf people. So this picture over here in the middle is ASL Coffee House. Gosh, we established that here in Valparaiso like 10 years. And we have a purpose for going to the coffee house. I'm a teacher at Purdue and we wanted our students to have communication with deaf people in our community. In the classroom, it's just not enough to learn, but when you go out into the community, the students are like, wow, this is really cool. We wanted to combine these two atmospheres and create an experience monthly for our students. And we wanted the deaf community to be a part of this as well. And that's the ASL Coffee House. So this picture right here on the bottom with the, the people, gosh, for a while now, it um, was the Deaf Festival. And it's not only for deaf people. I mean, we established it for the community to be a part of it. I mean, there's different kinds of information, all different sorts of things that can be at this Deaf Expo. I and mean, we want people to come and see who we are. It's not only for the deaf people, it's for general community. I mean, deaf children are coming in and they are just going, wow, I've never seen that before. That is really cool. I really learned something today. <laughs> We want to include the larger community into our community. So there are several different communities and we're trying to open up and learn from the communities. It, I didn't establish all of these things just for my benefit, my benefit, but I have this experience and it has impacted me and different experiences have impacted the other communities as well. So we have all these different experiences and I have these communities that I've been a part of. So everybody, everybody in my family was hearing. I grew up in a hearing family. And at the age of eight, I was kicked out of the house. What? How were you kicked out of the house at eight? Well, in my school, there was a teacher's assistant. My mo her mother and father were deaf. And my parents told me that I needed to go. And my parents did trust them. So I entered the deaf community from her. And they really, really encouraged me to go. I learned the deaf culture and the deaf language. At the same time, I was in my mom and dad's culture and my mom and dad's community. For example, the Wizard of Oz celebration, I was involved in that. Up in Chester, then, I was involved in that a lot. I went to the library and signed with kids. I mean, many different things. I was trying to balance being involved in these two communities. So my grandmother and grandfather were a big influence. And they know how, they don't know how to sign a whole lot, but they tried to communicate. And I would go with them and I would learn from them, even though they didn't know sign, but I would learn the English language through those experiences. And all of that has made me who I am today. And those experiences are important but I also need to learn how to be a part, allow the other part of the world to be into my life. And trying to match those uh, interactions was uh, an experience for me. So when you find out somebody is deaf, that word deaf, hmm, you're not afraid of deaf, you may be more afraid of the communication barrier we can really communicate. I mean, uh, there's, that, there's that fear, and that's the barrier. So we also have a barrier of attitude. There's the barrier of attitude of the deaf people just can't do things. I mean, all of these experiences have become a part of me. I mean, I have this journey, and I, I try and journey through these things, and I struggle, and I find this barrier that just keeps me from moving forward. 
I'm trying to communicate, but the other side of the communication, that person needs to try as well. So I set up a program some time ago called Eye of Fire Safety. So I had a friend and I was trying to, you know, we were working together and we were trying to sign. She was a firefighter and many people don't know about fire safety. So we would come together and we would talk about fire safety and I would explain what would happen for deaf people. I mean, we don't have fire alarms. We can't hear fire alarms. So we worked together. I mean, she didn't help me into this. We, we were equals. We were peers. Our experiences were different, but we were equal people. We, we had many discussions in the community. At the same time, we did develop two videos for fire safety. I would sign, uh, you know, that in that language. And then the deaf community would know how to be safe. So this journey that I was on became something with all of my different experiences throughout my life. So th that program has, um, you know, we finished that program and uh, we're gonna keep sending those videos out. So you all know there's there's a change in community. And you know, we have these different areas, these different communities, these that have the same culture, same values, but you know, over time they start to change. And technology is an example I wanna talk about. Just imagine, you know, a hundred years ago, you know, about a hundred years ago, you know, uh, the phone start was invented and through the years it was a slow process in changing for technology. So that's for the hearing people. The deaf people didn't have a phone. There was no phone. We depended on people to help us communicate through that phone. Around the 1950s, there was something called a TTY. It's kind of like a text, you know, it's the same idea. We would send little texts through the telephone. And then that and then, of course, things started to change. We had the hearing phone that changed, and all of a sudden, in the 2000s, huge change, the video phone was developed. And oh my gosh, things changed overnight for us. I mean, we went from t typing and signing, we could sign on the phone, it was in, we could do that. I mean, the clubs and the organizations before was just dissolved. I mean, everything we set up before, like the clubs, uh, the, the design and our traditions changed overnight. So our attitudes and our organizations, how, how are we gonna, you know, move into the future? This video phone cost this overnight change I mean, the hearing people had this slow change, but for us, it was instant overnight change. So our organizations and clubs just kind of stopped. We didn't know how to visualize our, communi our communities. So we had to just abandon everything and start from scratch and design a new way to do community. So technology into the future, I mean, really, it's gonna look different. I mean, what do you think it's gonna look like, right? So. So your children arrive from home, and a lot of the families who have deaf children just leave the kids right there, and they play with their devices and not get them involved. That's, I mean, it's really important for those ch deaf children to get involved. That one word, deaf, there's a an predisposition of limitations with that one word. Those deaf children need to get involved into the deaf community. Yes, technology did change everything. But those parents need to encourage those children to get involved, go to different events and activities, different programs, get them going, get them going into those activities. So just like my grandmother and grandmother got me involved into community, 
it's really important to have those experiences and for them to have their journey into the community. That's really important. So that's the community change. So we have Facebook and we have different technologies. I mean, we, we can make real face-to-face -face connections. And in the defense, how are we going to change to move from the past to the future? That's something that we really are considering. So I have a few quotes for you here. That first one, a lot of people have grown up with that. It, it's a pretty, something that I've seen every day. It's true. So how we in, are involved into the community and it takes village to raise a child. But this experience can impact me and impact you. It's not just impacting I mean, that attitude and the culture, you know, that, that's when we're trying to be vulnerable here. So the second quote, um, you know, this is my community, it's my experience. I have the same experiences, we have the same language and the same culture, you know. For example, deaf persons at work in the world and we sit here and try and work really hard, but then I come back to, I'm um, glad to be back to this culture. Your community and your language and your values, it's natural for everybody to keep the same way, to have that intersectionality, and also to have that mutual respect that needs to stay for sure. Hopefully, I mean, for tonight, I was looking for another quote, and this quote just kept coming back to me, this last one here. So we have our different communities. You know, like that popcorn festival, we have that experience where we were able to go out into the community. And we want you to keep your, every community needs to keep their values and their language and their culture but we become a part of each other and experience those different cultures and language. It's really important for all of us to be equal. We can grow and develop and learn from each other and, and move through life. I mean, we still need that mutual respect. But it doesn't matter we still have to have that mutual respect and be vulnerable to socialize and grow from there. From that, because community is very important. I mean, our life journey and what is put into this journey is important. We can't just leave everybody alone and and make that person oh just leave them alone right over there. No, it's come on, come with us, and we will journey and experience together. Thank you very much. Have a good night.